Hi, this is Darian, and you're on my channel, a new channel, which is just random miscellaneous stuff because I'm not very committed to sticking to one topic. So today we're going to talk about literature. Yes, I know, I know, huge variety, but more specifically, we're going to talk about authors who copy other authors. Now, I know it has to happen because then we'd get some really weird ideas which are original but are just really weird and don't make sense. But see, some of them, huh, like just as an example, we're not going to pretend, you know, this isn't like a real thing. It's not like I actually have this opinion or anything. Psh. But Let's talk about dystopian novels. Now, there are some great dystopian novels a while back, like 1984 was a great dystopian novel, and if you haven't read it, you should check it out. But, oh, and there's also Let's Get Tectonical. I don't know when that came out, but it looks like a good novel. And then there comes The Hunger Games, which is the start of a huge just regular modern classic dystopian novel. It was alright, except for it was a really easy read, but it had adult messages hidden inside it. And that started copiers, copy authors, to start writing about that too. So they had easy reads with difficult or complex thoughts. So then there went on to more and more and more, and then you just have this whole variety of dystopian, which is great, but there's just too much of it. We need some different stuff, some originality. <laughs> uh, I'm just kidding. I'm not, like, actually hating on dystopian novels because then, like, every kid in my grade would hate me, but I really am. Okay. So let's ask a child's opinion on what they think of authors that copy other authors. Hey Zach, what do you think of people who take other people's ideas and keep copying them and copying them? Well, that's a really hard question. I don't know. Do you think it's good or bad when somebody takes somebody else's idea? Uh, good. It's good? Bad, sorry, bad. No, it's okay if it's good. Well, there you have it from a seven-year-old boy. It is good to copy ideas. Okay, so according to seven-year-olds, it's a good idea to copy. But, you know, I think that's a good metaphor for what our youth is thinking. It's okay to come up with a new story because, you know, it was already a good story, so why not write it again only with different or more interesting ideas, which actually is a pretty good base. Okay, so that was actually a very nice answer from a seven-year-old. Okay, I see you have Sonic Universe, a comic book, I believe, but also we'll consider it a book for the sake of this video. What do you like about that book? Um... When, um, when Knuckles and Shadow have a fight. Oh, and who's Knuckles and Shadow? Knuckles is the red guy. Shadow is, like, um, black and red. So, what, what makes you happy about this novel? Why do you like this comic book? Because, um, it's, like, fighting and stuff. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, Zach thought that Sonic and Hedgehog was a good book because it was fun and interesting. So maybe that doesn't give us too much information, but maybe it also gives us that children don't really like to describe that much their books. They just enjoy doing it, which is why we can't research that well what children like. But here's a good children's novel. Maybe not this one, but it's the only one I could find. Um, it's a look and find book, but the Charlie Brown novels are great, and the TV show was great. Now, even now, it was considered kind of risky for a kid's show back then, or a kid's book. 
And now that might seem kind of ridiculous, but you gotta think how long ago these were made. 1965 was when Charlie Brown Christmas came out, I believe. And they add some stuff in there, side comments you might not get as a child, but as an adult, you get it. See, that was risky. That was, that's what brought on different originality and riskiness. See, this is the foundation to good novels. Okay, well, that's all I have today. See you guys later.